Have you heard of the greatest show on earth? Well, it was owned by P.T. Barnum, who died April 7th, 1891. Selling millions of tickets, the Ringling Brothers and Barnum and Bailey Circus had big draws, including General Tom Thumb, a man only 25 inches tall, and an elephant, Jumbo, whose name entered the dictionary. Barnum, who was received by President Lincoln and gave a command performance for Queen Victoria, stated, most persons on the whole are humbugged by believing too little than by believing too much. P.T. Barnum said, politeness and civility are the best capital ever invested in business, and the best kind of charity is to help those who are willing to help themselves. Barnum also said, the desire for wealth is nearly universal, and none can say it is not laudable, provided the possessor of it accepts its responsibility and uses it as a friend to humanity. As the circus was not open on Sundays, Barnum let his New York great Roman Hippodrome be used by Dwight L. Moody for evangelistic campaigns. When Barnum's show began traveling, D.L. Moody, with the help of J.P. Morgan and Cornelius Vanderbilt, transformed the Hippodrome into a revival tabernacle. Services began February 7, 1876, with 7,000 people in the main hall, 4,000 in overflow, thousands outside, 500 ushers, and 1,200 singers, directed by Ira Sankey. Sunday attendance hit 25,000. It was perhaps Moody's most important campaign, for in impacting New York, he impacted the nation. D.L. Moody began his ministry in 1858 as a traveling shoe salesman who started a Sunday school mission for underprivileged children in Chicago. Classes were taught in an abandoned saloon. D.L. Moody stated, it is a masterpiece of the devil to make us believe that children cannot understand religion. Would Christ have made a child the standard of faith if he had known that it was not capable of understanding his words? By 1860, the class had grown to over 1,000 attendees, with even President-elect Abraham Lincoln visiting November 25, 1860, on his way to Washington, D.C. During the Civil War, Moody ministered to soldiers on the battle lines and served as president of the YMCA, Young Men's Christian Association, from 1865 to 1870. D.L. Moody built the Illinois Street Church in Chicago, but it was destroyed in the Great Chicago Fire of 1871. D.L. Moody said, We can stand affliction better than we can prosperity, for in prosperity we forget God. Moody rebuilt the church and renamed it the Chicago Avenue Church. It grew to an attendance of over 10,000 with 6,000 waiting outside. D.L. Moody stated, Moses spent 40 years thinking he was somebody, 40 years learning he was nobody, and 40 years discovering what God can do with a nobody. D.L. Moody preached to tens of thousands in England, meeting preacher Charles Spurgeon and Hudson Taylor, missionary to China. D.L. Moody supported the Israeli settlement of their homeland. D.L. Moody preached to hundreds of thousands across America, holding evangelistic meetings from Boston to New York to San Francisco to Vancouver. Even President Ulysses S. Grant and his cabinet attended one of D.L. Moody's meetings on January 19, 1876. D.L. Moody commented, There are many of us that are willing to do great things for the Lord, but few of us willing to do the little things. D.L. Moody remarked, God doesn't seek for golden vessels, but he must have clean ones. And the Bible will keep you from sin, or sin will keep you from the Bible. D.L. Moody started the Chicago Bible Institute, renamed the Moody Bible Institute, after his death, with R.A. Torrey succeeding him as president. Dwight L. Moody declared, treat the Lord Jesus Christ as a personal friend. His is not a creed, a mere doctrine, but it is he himself we have. And, Moody said, I know the Bible is inspired because it inspires me. D.L. Moody explained, faith makes all things possible, love makes all things easy, and preparation for old age should begin not later than one's teens. A life which is empty of purpose until 65 will not suddenly become filled on retirement. D.L. Moody declared, death may be the king of terrors, but Jesus is the king of kings. 
The Chicago Avenue Church was renamed the Moody Church in 1906 and continued making an international impact with its pastor, Dr. Erwin W. Lutzer. It's important for us to remember that America is a country with great men and women having faith and making their faith have an impact on the world.